This video is brought to you by Nebula and TLDR's Race Across Europe. In the last decade or so, Saudi-Russian relations have been on the up. This really began in 2016, when the two countries, who also happen to be the two largest oil exporters in the world, decided to start cooperating on oil exports to keep global prices high. However, in the last few months or so, relations have become strained, as Russia, desperate for oil revenue to fund the war in Ukraine, has started undercutting Saudi Arabia by exporting more oil, while Saudi Arabia cuts production. This is the worst of both worlds for Saudi Arabia. It sells less barrels of oil, but prices stay low because Russia floods the market with more oil, which just means lower revenues. So in this video, we're going to have a look at how Russia and Saudi Arabia became friends, why they've fallen out, and what might happen next. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. So let's start by explaining why and when Saudi Arabia and Russia became allies. For most of modern history, the two countries have actually had pretty tense relations. As the world's two largest oil exporters, they were constantly undercutting one another in international markets, and Saudi Arabia's Kushti alliance with the US closed off the possibility of good relations with the Soviet Union or Russia. However, in the past decade or so, Saudi-Russia relations have improved significantly, to the point where they're now sort of mates. The obvious symptom of this blossoming bromance is OPEC+. For those of you who don't know, OPEC, or the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, is basically a cartel of oil-producing states, mostly in the Middle East and led by Saudi Arabia, who cooperate on their oil exports to control the global oil price. In 2016, Saudi invited a load of other oil-producing countries, most notably Russia, to join them in coordinating oil exports, and this new collective became known as OPEC+. Anyway, as we see it, there are three reasons Saudi Arabia and Russia have become mates. First, their leaders are pretty similar. Putin and MBS are both autocrats that rely on oil sales to keep their people compliant with aspirations to regional hegemony. Second, the recent collapse of the US-Saudi relationship has created the political space for a relationship with Russia. For most of post-war history, the US and the Saudis have basically been best mates. The relationship began in the 50s, when America needed oil and an anti-communist ally in the Middle East, and was founded on this idea called petrodollar recycling. Basically, America would buy Saudi oil with dollars, and the Saudis would use those so-called petrodollars to buy American weapons. There were occasional hiccups. Tensions were strained after 9-11 because of the Saudis' suspicious relations with the Bin Laden family, and there have been persistent tensions over the US's close relationship to Israel. But every time, relations have recovered. Because, well, the Americans want cheap oil, and the Saudis want American military support. However, the US-Saudi relationship has deteriorated sharply in the past 15 years or so, for two reasons. First, Obama's and then Biden's concerns about human rights really irritate the Saudis. On the presidential campaign trail, Biden accused the Saudis of murdering children in Yemen and promised to turn Saudi Arabia into a, quote, pariah state for the killing of journalist and dissident Jamal Khashoggi in 2018. This hasn't gone down well with the Saudis, especially Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman or MBS, who responded by shunning Biden diplomatically. Second, the rise of shale. Basically, for most of recent history, America has used more oil than it produces domestically, which means it relies on countries like Saudi Arabia for its oil imports. However, in the 2010s, when oil prices were high and interest rates were low, American oil companies started looking for unconventional sources, including shale oil production, otherwise known as fracking. Thanks to the success of fracking, America stopped needing to import so much oil, and it actually became a net energy exporter in 2020. This strained the US-Saudi relationship, 
both because, well, America didn't really need Saudi oil anymore, and because US shale production kept oil prices down and made it harder for OPEC to control the global oil price, and this paved the way for Saudi-Russian relations. The third and most important reason is oil. In 2016, after Saudi Arabia deliberately flooded the oil market to try to bring down global prices and bankrupt American shale producers, the Russians and the Saudis realised that, if they wanted to bring prices back up, they'd need to cooperate, hence the creation of OPEC+. Saudi Arabia wanted higher prices to fund MBS's ambitious Vision 2030 programme, which involved creating massive cities in the desert and turning Saudi Arabia into a clean energy superpower, while Putin wanted higher prices to build up his reserves ahead of his invasion of Ukraine. OPEC Plus was an immediate success, and by 2019, prices had climbed from their low of $30 per barrel in early 2016 to nearly $80 in 2018. However, in the past few weeks, Russia and Saudi Arabia have quietly fallen out, and unsurprisingly, the reason is oil. The basic issue is that Saudi Arabia wants to keep production low to guarantee high prices, because it needs high prices over a long time period to afford its transition to a clean energy superpower, while Russia wants to sell as much oil as possible as quickly as possible to fund the war in Ukraine, even if that means lower prices in the short term. The first sign of tension came in April, when, at their monthly meeting, OPEC+, Plus, i.e. both Saudi Arabia and Russia, agreed to cut production. However, while Saudi Arabia did indeed cut production, Russia didn't, and the Kremlin actually stopped disclosing oil export data. This happened again earlier this week, when, after their monthly meeting, Saudi Arabia agreed to unilaterally reduce its exports by a million barrels of oil per day, to prop up falling prices. But Russia made no similar commitment. This is the worst of both worlds for Saudi Arabia. It sells less barrels of oil, but prices stay low because Russia floods the market with more oil, which just means less revenue. Conversely, it's the best of both worlds for Russia. It gets to sell more barrels and prices are higher than they would be because Saudi Arabia isn't exporting as much, which means less supply and so higher prices. This is a classic case of what's sometimes called cartel failure. Essentially, cartel members have an incentive to cheat the cartel, because if they sell more oil, they get to benefit from both higher prices and higher sales volume, thereby maximising profits. This has always been a bit of a problem for OPEC. Countries often export more than their quota, but it's become particularly acute as OPEC has expanded to OPEC+. Plus because with more members, it's harder to figure out who's cheating. Anyway, you get the idea. Because Russia needs to sell as much oil as possible to fund Putin's war in Ukraine, Russia is cheating the cartel and undermining OPEC+, straining relations with Saudi Arabia and further isolating Russia politically. There's also some other huge news, by the way. We've just launched our new series, TLDR's Race Across Europe. Take a look. Go, Jan, go, go, go. He's off. He's off. He's gone. Jan's going. I hate and this. And so are we. <laughs> I hate this. Oh, no. Oh, it's, just, it's harsh, my vibe, so hard. <laughs> this is the worst thing that could have happened. I mean, Jack is definitely laughed. There's no other way. Guys, it's not looking good. What? 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 What do you mean? What do you mean? We've come through some kind of police barricade. I'm afraid she's dead. I don't know. It's Jeremy. Look at those geese. He goes so fast. Oh, shit. Now, you can watch the first episode on the TLDR EU channel right now, but we're also releasing every subsequent episode a week early on Nebula. So, if you're a Nebula subscriber, you can watch the first two episodes right now totally ad free. That's true of all TLDR content, by the way. We regularly release our videos on Nebula before they come to YouTube. And everything's ad free, so not even this advert is here. It's not just the race either. Every week, TLDR produces well over an hour's worth of content, which is exclusively for Nebula. That's exclusive discussions where our team share their thoughts on the latest stories, extended daily briefings, our Nebula series This Week in Parliament, and even full explainers. So if you want the full TLDR experience, you really ought to be on Nebula. Sign up now using our link in the description to get everything the platform has to offer for just £2 a month.